yeah, yeah, it's your boy, Cold Blue Opinions, coming back at you with another one of his opinions, and it's JRW Baseball Hat, because I used to play for JRW, that's right, the the team of black boys who got banned, not banned from the League World Series, but they had their trophy taken, because they, they cheated and took two extra players, however, everybody does it, now, let's get into what I want to talk about today, Andrew Tate getting banned on, on socials, so, I didn't want to make a knee-jerk response to any of this. And plus, I mean, it's, it's not that interesting to me. But, like, when I thought about it, I'm like, it's a little bit more interesting than I thought. And the reason being is because, one, Andrew Tate didn't get big through Instagram. He didn't get big through Twitter. Yes, you could say TikTok. However, the, the, the damage is done. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's going to be hard to really ban him on TikTok because he's not even on TikTok. It's a bunch of other people who, who support him or who are affiliating for him that are posting his videos, that are spreading his message. So it's like, you're going to have to ban all of these people. And this is how they make their living. So they're going to do what they do. They're going to find ways to do it. And they're going to find ways to adjust to do it. They're going to find ways to adjust being able to post his content and make money from it around your rules. And get this, all these people are Hustlers University, which means they're all in one place, which means they're all communicating with each other, and they're all going to be like, hey, man, so I see that you aren't banned, but they gave me a strike, so what are you doing? I know that you're not getting in any trouble. What are you doing that's different that we can all do so that we don't run into this problem? And then they're all going to do the same shit as each other, and <laughs> you're going to find ways around your little dumbass rules that you made. So it doesn't matter because there's nothing you could do about the TikTok thing anyways. You could try to ban them all. Are you really going to ban all those fucking accounts? The dude has like how many billions of views already through his name on TikTok? It's crazy. I don't I don't I don't see how they're going to be able to pull it off. It's it's basically going to be like, look, if everybody in the city commits a crime, are you going to arrest everybody? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why they did, the police didn't do shit during during the riots like 2 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Uh but this, aside from that, you know, dude got big. It was YouTube, TikTok that really helped him. And that doesn't really change anything. He's going on Instagram, but Instagram is really... Instagram was more so like a place where I guess all the people could go to follow him. But he didn't He didn't really post much on Instagram. And he had a page. And yeah, no. It's just... I don't, I don't really, I don't really see how this could truly affect him in his pockets. And this is a way for them to try to cancel him, but you're not really canceling anything. You're just sort of making people feel like he got canceled. So you're, you're giving people the satisfaction like, oh, okay, Andrew Tate's finally gone. Ah, yes, the people who hate him. But then here's the second part. So then the people who don't hate him, the people who are in the middle on him, who like some of his points, and the people who actually like him, what you've done is you've essentially made him a martyr, but he's still alive. So essentially what you've done is like, what happened with this man right here, Tupac? You see why I wore that shirt now? Tupac died. He had a message. Tupac had a message. And you could even say Biggie. Biggie didn't have like a message, but he was this big, great rapper. And now these dudes are infamous. Who's to say how people would look at Tupac? Who's to say how people look at Biggie if they never died? Especially both of them dying. It like doubled the impact of it, right? Because they had more of a story behind it. It double martyred them. But Tupac became this Malcolm X of rap or something, you know? Like this, like he's basically a part of black history. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy. And because he died, he became this martyr. And people were like, oh shit. Same thing with Malcolm X. Same thing with Martin Luther King. Their impact was felt a lot more after they were killed because they were killed because their message their message was so well Tupac wasn't killed because of his message he just had a message and then he was killed because of other shit but he was still killed and they had the same sort of effect right and it it it, it gave him it, it I don't want to say infamy infamy is not the word I, I, I don't know why I want to say it but I want to say it but it immortalized his name it immortalized his name it immortalized Biggie's name it immortalized Tupac's name and then Malcolm X Martin Luther King's their names got immortalized because they were killed because of their message so it made their message seem like more like, oh shit, the system felt like they needed to kill them. So they was really saying some shit. If the if people felt like they needed to kill them, that's all. But Andrew Tate didn't get killed. He didn't he never got killed. And I'm not saying Andrew Tate is Malcolm X or anything. But he never got killed. But you pretty much the number one way in which we communicate now is through social media. 
and we're pretty much symbiotic with our phones, with our electronics, our technology. We're basically cyborgs, as, as uh, Elon Musk says, right? We always have our phone in our hand, and it's our number one way in which we'll network and communicate with people. People make money through it. You can pay with it. You can do everything with it. And they're trying to get rid of him through that. They pretty much tried to kill him. I mean, and they did to some extent. And now he's still alive. He can still adjust. He can still come back. He's still there, but you've killed him on social media. So now what you've done is you've made people say, oh shit, wait. So the establishment felt the need to get rid of this man. The powers that be felt the need to get rid of this man because of his message. Maybe he was saying something. So all the, because there's a lot of conservatives who don't like him. All the conservatives who had knee-jerk reactions to be like, no, no, because you know, I don't, make, he hurt my feelings. I don't like the guy. Who are against people being banned. They look at that and they're like, wait, that happened to my boy Trump. Wait, that happened to Alex Jones. Hold on. Wait, if you did this to Alex Jones and you just did this to Andrew Tate, these are all people who speak their mind that go against the system, who cannot be controlled by the system, who have a lot of influence, and you just so happen, and you just so happen to want to ban him and get them all off socials. And you just did the same thing to Andrew Tate. Let me look into Andrew Tate a little bit more. You know what? Let me do a little bit more research. You know what? I just saw a clip and he said some stuff about women. And I love my wife, you know, and, 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 it, and it didn't resonate with me. Maybe I'll look into him now. I'll look into him a little bit more because that makes me more interested to see what this guy has to say. Considering they did this to Alex Jones and Donald Trump, it seems to be a pattern with this kind of stuff. So I'm going to look a little bit. And now those people become fans of him. You know what? They, they disregard stuff he says about women. They're willing to put it to the, put it to the side just to be like, fuck the establishment because so many people feel like, fuck the establishment. Or people are just like, wow, this dude, he's a martyr now. So his fans love him even more. This dude's a martyr. And the people who are in the middle, same shit. It's either or. They become a fan because, well, you shouldn't be doing that. I support this man's right to free, freedom of speech. He should be able to speak his mind how he pleases without being banned off social media. So I actually support him. I support him when he has to say. And more and more people are going to want to hear him out. And all it takes is people's willingness to hear the man out and to see the nuance. A lot of people... They're not trying to see the nuance in Andrew Tate because they see these clips of him saying these things that they deem as horrible. Oh, he's sexist. He did, da, da, da. he did this. He did that. Blah, 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 blah. And then they don't see the nuance in what he says because, well, that's all I need to see. I don't want to watch any more videos of his. I Because I, I was really thinking about it recently. I understand what people are saying, but it's like that's so closed minded. Whenever people are criticizing him, they're saying, oh, he's he's this narcissist. Oh, he he. He hates women and he's this. I'm like, how are you seeing that? Because I don't see that. But the thing is, I've watched more of Andrew Tate's videos. So I'm allowed, I've allowed myself to be able to see the nuance. These people, I can imagine, they see this one clip of Andrew saying women can't drive or saying that he'd rather have a man fly a plane instead of a woman or that women are not incapable of being able to make decisions in high stress situations. I, I assume they saw these clips and they were just like, that's all I need to see of him. Fuck that guy. He hates women. He's a sexist, he's a misogynist, and he's arrogant because he says he's God's favorite, blah, blah, blah. That's all they've seen. But I've watched his videos, and I've seen the man say on numerous accounts, we need to protect women. Any man who goes at... The dude fucking hates the Tinder swindler. You'd think the guy would like the Tinder swindler based off how these people talk about him. But he's like, that guy, if I saw that guy, i fuck him up. Me and my boys, we fuck him up. I don't like that guy. If I ever see a guy, he's a fucking punk-ass bitch. He's a fucking punk. I don't like that guy. I don't like dudes like that. I, I don't see the need. He, there are times where he was like, look, I don't go back and forth and call women out of their names, call them the, the guys who are in the business of hurting women's feelings and making them cry just because they're emotional. I, I, I'm not with that shit. Women need to be protected. This, that. He said all this shit. He said, I believe women are beautiful creatures on numerous occasions. And then someone said something about, True Jordy recently said something about him uh, and his mother, how he speaks about it. He's like, look, you can tell, you can tell the worth of a man and how he treats women based on how he speaks about his mother. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, every time Andrew talks about his mother, he calls her beautiful. He's like, I, he's like, look, I love my woman. She's a beautiful, she's a beautiful, I mean, I love my mother. She's a beautiful woman. We just don't see eye to eye on things. She doesn't agree with me on everything, but that's okay. I still love her. I'll take care of her. They, <laughs> where, where does it sound like this man hates his mother? So, look, man, this stuff, it, it, it you can't, you, you can't cancel the man now. At this point, you Kind of made it worse. Kind of made it worse, in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And I'm out. Peace.